All right, happy Friday, everyone. I think we are going live for our Parent Advisory Council meeting today. Um, happy Family Engagement Week. I'm Crystal Hawkins, our district's Family Engagement Specialist. And we are giving a little bit of time for us to come in. If we're joining us live, please feel free to um, oh, I think video hasn't started yet. We're waiting. We're good. Oh, okay. We're good. All right. All right. So again, we are coming in live. Welcome. Happy Friday. Happy Family Engagement Week. Um, again, my name is Crystal Hawkins. I'm our district's family engagement specialist. And this is a really special week. So this is the first time in Kentucky history that we've had um, a week designated by our governor as Family Engagement Week. So we are excited. Um, we've been doing a lot to uplift voices and uplift family voices in our district. And uh, we love that we get our week, right? And so <laughs> we're gonna celebrate this week. The way that we're going to celebrate this week um, in this Parent Advisory Council meeting is we are going to share some parent voices uh, today. So we're going to share parent voices. We are going to um, uplift what you all have to say about family engagement. And as you listen, I want you to think about how does this resonate with you? Um, do any of these stories resonate with how you feel about being engaged with your school? And if it doesn't resonate with you, I want you to think about what is your story and we want to hear your story. So a challenge today is to listen to the stories that are being shared with you about family engagement. The other challenge today is to think about what is your story and how can you share your story with us? Because if we are going to uplift families in this district, we need to know um, what are your experiences and what are your hopes and dreams for your kids? So to get started, we always let you know kind of what uh, the Parent Advisory Council is. We, again, you'll see that we are, the pictures of us meeting in person, we miss meeting in person, uh, but one day we will come together again. But in the meantime, we are here virtually and we're excited that we can either, that you can either join us now or you can join us later if you see this recording. But the whole goal of Parent Advisory Council is to build community, it's to really uplift your voice, it's to share resources with you. Um, so today, we're building community and we're uplifting um, our voices. And to get us started, I'm really honored that I was able to um, be profiled by our amazing communications team. And um, this just kind of shares why I'm passionate about the work that I do with family. So we wanted to start by sharing voice and I hope that you enjoy my story as well. So we are going to start by allowing you to understand kind of how I got started with family engagement. We support all schools and all schools have a family engagement lead and a team. And we work to really support them, create an action plan, um, develop strategies to partner with families. So the goal is to make sure that every student and every family is able to get the full benefits of a family being engaged and partnering with the school and their teacher. So we know that when families are engaged, kids do well. And so we want to make sure that know that like I do this work because my mom was a single parent in JCPS and had a very difficult time so I knew that a mother like my mom still might have a difficult time in this district really advocating for their child if you have multiple jobs or multiple kids like you know and you can't get to school at the time that you want to get to school you may still have um 
a very difficult time. I'm excited to see the change in beliefs and just the change in the definition of what is family engagement. When I started this work, it was called parent involvement. And we learned that, well, you know, we're learning that involvement is more a we, you know, you come if we ask you to come, right? What we're moving toward is family engagement where we're partnering with you. We're recognizing that you're the expert in your kid. The lasting, lifelong, life-changing impact is gonna happen if I empower that family to be able to help their child and to partner with the school, wherever you go in JCPS or whatever school that you end up at, that you are empowered to be able to change your child's trajectory through education. All right, so that was kind of why, um, kind of my, my, what started me in really getting engaged with families or like really where I'm grounded in my beliefs about family engagement. And um, in addition to kind of my beliefs, we want to engage our families to understand what are you all's beliefs about what uh, family engagement really should entail. So we wanna start with an amazing dad, Eddie Weaver Jr who is a parent at Mazik. He gives us a lot of tips on how to get engaged. I want you to listen to his words and uh, think of the ways that you've been engaged at your school. Do his words motivate you? Um, or do you have other ways that, tips that you've gotten engaged at school? So I'm gonna turn it over to Mr. Weaver. My name is Eddie Weaver Jr. Um, I am a parent of a 14 year old son. His name is Alex. He attends Brown, Brown School here in Louisville, Kentucky. He's in the ninth grade. Uh, my hopes and dreams for my son, Alex, is that he graduate, he gets a quality education from Brown School. Uh, he graduates from Brown School. Uh, my dream is that he finds his passion and fulfills his career ambition, which is that of becoming a veterinarian. My experience uh, uh, at Brown School has been great. Um, if I or my, actually my wife, we are, I have always been able to get in contact with my son's teachers. Uh, they have been very responsive. And if, if we have any concerns, they always address them and respond back to us accordingly. Well, I'm not gonna try to reinvent the wheel, but I would tell you the first thing you should do is, it starts with orientation. Beginning of the school year, you should always want to uh, be excited about meeting your your child's teachers, and that's what I did. I actually meet our son's um, uh, teachers usually the, during orientation, and then I also do the same thing right at uh, the student-led conference. For us, we have student-led conference at Brown School. Maybe at some schools may not have that, but they have the teacher. <laughs> Uh, parent-teacher conference, but it's a great opportunity to let them know who I am. I always provide them with my contact information. So usually, and my wife joke and tease me about this, but the fact that I always have a business card in my hand, I give them my, which has my phone number on there. And it has my mobile phone number, the reason why, and my work, and my email address, because that way they can get a hold of me, because I know teachers are also busy. They don't always have the opportunity to talk to someone on the phone, but they can email and let me know if, there's, if they see this a potential <laughs> challenge or a potential issue regards to my son. Uh, Infinite Campus is a great resource or a tool that I use. Um, uh, I call it parent, or really the parent portal. And I put that app actually on my phone. So I get to find out every day what happens with, Al with Alex's progress in regards to his performance in class. I know what's going on even before he, even before I even pick him up or my wife picks him up. So, we both find out with the information, but usually I'm the one to find out first. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I would do first. Um, the uh, second thing, uh, I would just also just reach out, get involved, um, get involved in our uh, your PTSA. Um, that's another thing. So that's some of the things that I, has worked well for me. By being involved and getting, uh, getting that information out there, you know what's going on with your child and you get more engaged with your child. Have formal relationships with parents and it's simply because of the fact that other parents uh, that's in the same grade as my son. Um, 
I have been blessed or highly motivated initially by my wife, but I, I did it on my own. I've been doing it in my own home since then, but going to all the field trips that my son has been in, especially since after fifth grade, I've been in the ones prior to that was her for the first part because I was traveling a little bit. But mm -hmm. after that, it was it's been me going on field trips, uh, you know, field trips, even not only just locally, but also when we travel, it was uh, going to St. Louis, Missouri, which mm -hmm. I'm originally from. Uh, and so it was a great opportunity to find out and learn more about the parents of my son. Uh, you know, because he's been friends with them or what have you. And they get a chance to know who we are and we get to work together, especially if there's uh, some type of activity that are, involves our kids. Um, so I would say the teachers, the parents, and and also the, some members of faculty. I can assure you that when I go to Brown School, if I run into a faculty, faculty member, nine out of 10 times they know who I am. They're mm -hmm. like, oh, yeah, you're Alexander's, you're Alex's dad. Mm -hmm. uh, or they call me by name. Hey, Mr. Weaver or Mr. Eddie, how you doing today? They know mm -hmm. me now. Uh, since COVID, that's a lot changed since then. So, but before that, I I did walk. I would walk up, and they would never know who I am. So, mm -hmm. it's a blessing to be at a school where it's K through twelve. Not everyone has that opportunity, and I understand that. And that's why I go back to my initial point of saying, just get yourself out there to know who people are, know who mm -hmm. the, your people are, or know who you expect. The faculty and staff are because they 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 have your son's or your child's well you know interest best in heart. Um, honestly, it's um, it's for the better. It's that I it, we get a chance to he knows that I have I care and I have an interest. Um, he tells me everything, and that's what you want to do. You know, especially my son's a teenager, and. You know, it's, it's a blessing to have your teenager tell you just by anything that comes to mind what they, what's going on there. Absolutely. It becomes a point where they don't tell you at all, that's when you want to be concerned about. But he tells me everything, good, bad, or indifferent, however you want to look at it. He tells me everything. And that's that's why I'm glad. And so me being involved in the school and activities, and just like this morning, he asked me, he said, what are you doing now, Daddy? I said, well, I have to go ahead and get on a conference call with, uh, you know, meeting with you. And he said, you're always on the conference call and you're always at, at, at doing something with the school system or Brown. I said, yes. I said, but I, I'm trying to make a better future for now for you, but also for kids coming after you, son. And so he understands that. So there's four bullet points that I've listed. Uh, one is introduce yourself to your child's teacher. That's one strategy. Uh, you know, again, as I said before, provide your contact information during the orientation, or in a parent-teacher conference or student letter conference, which I said earlier. Second, sign up for PTSA or the SBDM. Um, if there's an opportunity to serve as an officer or a board member, go ahead and do so. Uh, third, uh, log on to Infinite Campus. Uh, we talked about that earlier. Mm -hmm. uh, put it on your put an app, put that app on your phone so that way you know exactly what's going on with your child's progress or their performance in school. And lastly, my least, attend your child's uh, Activities. You know, I said field trips earlier, but I didn't mention about go to the fall festival that it has at the school, uh, or a chili supper. You know, during Halloween or or Thanksgiving or Santa Bazaar. You know, Christmas Bazaar that they have. You know, you never know what may happen because that's when they get the chance to know you and know the grades that their child gets is based off of their own merit. But they can also take into consideration. Well, let me see if I can get a hold of Mr. Weaver and find out how he can try, maybe he can help us out. We can work together to try to improve uh, if if Alex is struggling in a particular uh, part of the unit or chapter in a particular class. Wow. Well, Mr. Weaver gives us a lot of feedback and a lot, <laughs> a lot of advice. And let me tell you something. When I hear Mr. Weaver, I write some notes, right? Because I have a teenager as well. And a, one thing that I definitely relate to is getting on parent portal because um, I don't know anybody who has a teenager that's going to tell you everything, right? So parent portal is definitely good advice that Mr. Weaver shares, being present, being visible in the school. Um, and we are just grateful to have family leaders like Mr. Weaver. And so he gave us a lot of tips, but if you are watching this video 
either you're watching it right now and you want to put some things in the chat or you watch it later, I want to know some of your tips as well, because we know that um, family, sometimes we just need a little encouragement from other parents that are also busy and doing a lot of things because of other parents that are busy, if they can do it, it encourages us to do it too. So speaking of busy, <laughs> I want to lift up another parent and another amazing parent leader who has had a different experience, um, but also has some amazing hopes and dreams for her uh, children as well. I'm gonna turn it over to Chanel Moore to give you her perspective. And again, as you're listening to Chanel, you're listening to Eddie, think about how does this resonate with your experience? And if, it, if you can't relate or your experience is different, I want to know your story. So let's listen to Chanel. My name is Chanel Moore. I am a single mother of five interesting children. <laughs> they, they all are different ages, but I've got two at Channel West and two at Mazique, and then I've got a one-year-old. Um, I would definitely have to say that um, I hope that they have a somewhat clear path as to what path they would like to take um, while in school and after school. Um, I don't want them to just kind of finish school and then just be like, what do I do now? Because that's what I did. <laughs> and so um, I don't want to force them, um, so to say, and I'm trying to find that balance, but I definitely just want them to have a clear idea at least, or at least contingencies, some, some backups as to what they want to do after during and after school. Um, if, if I'm being perfectly honest, I haven't necessarily formed too many relationships. Um, I can say that since COVID, <laughs> I have been thrown completely out of whack because I was dealing with COVID and then had a new baby. And NTI, it was a lot for me. So I feel like, to be honest, I feel like this is my kid's first year in school. Yeah. And I'm kind of frazzled trying to find my way because I just mentioned last week, as a matter of fact, that I'm not as consistent as I typically am with being in touch with the teachers. Um, because I used to, I'm I, I was that parent, I'd go up to the school, I'm gonna sit in the back of the classroom if my child is struggling academically, I'm asking questions, I'm doing worksheets at home. I fell off of all of that because I'm just confused right now. I'm going to just be honest. So I haven't formed any relationships like the most. I do communicate with um, some of my kids' teachers. Um, and, and it's mainly for academics. Um, but I mean, my experience, I know that I had a couple of times where I would call up to the school to. Um, relay a message to my middle schoolers and they didn't get it. Other than that, um, and, and I do communicate with my elementary school, uh, my elementary school's administrative staff to let them know the changes of um, transportation in the afternoon. But other than that, I don't necessarily communicate with the schools, the teachers, as much as I would like. I, I, when I go to pick up my kids, I have to stand outside. <laughs> Yeah. I, can't, yeah. I can't even yeah. come in the building. So I can definitely say that COVID has impacted that tremendously because I don't feel like I'm able to be there. I'm not, I don't feel like I'm able to physically show up for my kids. And it has mentally just kind of warped my brain because I'm like, if I can't physically show up, showing up over the phone, it, it's not necessarily as beneficial as it was when I could show up to the school, get the paperwork in hand, make sure that they were turning it in, ask questions. Like it was, it was, I was definitely that parent that benefited more when I was able to actually be there. Yes, which, and and again, I understand COVID, but see, I've, I've got a couple of programs that I'm in where we have um, like bingo night 
and um, family cook nights and stuff like that. That stuff is pretty fun and it's online and, and, and you know, stuff like that for, you know, when we can't be in person. Meetups of any sort, but um, definitely community meetups. Um, I mean, at, at least one in person when it's nice outside, like at a park, but I understand that, you know, most of them would have to be virtual, but I would say that like frequent meetups to um, allow us to engage with each other. Like me, I want to be more engaged. Unfortunately, like I, I want to sign up. I, I've always told myself I'm going to do the PTA, PTSA or whatever it's called, but I don't want to, I don't want to restrict myself to that and put more on my plate, but I do want to be involved. So I don't necessarily know how that can, how that, what the proper resolution is for that, but I do want to be involved. Right now I've got kids in two different schools. Next year I'm going to have three different schools. So I know it's not realistic for me to join each one of the PTAs, but I don't know if, if there's any way to kind of get us to maybe um, doing some sort of parent engagement, something probably every three months. I, I, I can easily encourage someone else. <laughs> and what I will say is what has been told to me. Uh -huh. We don't have to do it all. Yeah, There are resources out here that will help us and, and programs out here. We may have to do the legwork to find them. And, and for, I can honestly say, Mazik, their newsletters, their daily newsletters, they do list a lot of resources. I know last school year, I missed out on a lot of them because my kids came after Christmas break. And so um, that... It's, it's just really understanding that there are there's help out here. And, and I know that I've felt at plenty of times that I'm just doing it all on my own. I have to do it all on my own. And I put way more on my plate than what I can actually handle and still be fighting trying to do it. Just let, let, let others help. Wow. Those words are very po powerful. If you are, if you've ever been um, a parent and you're thinking like, oh my goodness, yeah, Mr. Weaver, he shared all of these great tips. And I'm like, I, you can't get all of those things done. I hope that these beautiful, authentic words from Ms. Chanel Moore encourages you that sometimes it's a lot. And sometimes we have a lot of things we want to do, but we can't do. And um I think some of the words that we need to remember is just, you know, don't give up. You're not alone and um, just do what you can. So even just doing what you can or, you know, recognizing or verbalizing the dreams that you do have for your kids, that you do want more for your kids, that is a great place to start and just do what you can, right? So we understand that COVID has really impacted the relationships we have with schools, um, it is my goal to continue to build those relationships back um, or just maintain them if you had a good relationship. But we understand that it is not easy for everyone. And we want to encourage you to just keep going. And so we also had a parent leader, uh, Ms. Taryn Bell at Young, and she gave us some wonderful feedback as well. And I'm just going to share really quickly one of the things that uh, Ms. Bell shared. And she shared... Um, if for some reason being engaged in the school seems to be difficult, don't give up. Um, if you aren't getting through to one person, try another. Your voice is their voice. Make a relationship with at least the teacher and you will have your child's biggest fan on your side. So uh, Taryn, Ms. Taryn Bell um, has a wonderful reflection of, you know, just working with your child's teacher. So if you're not in a place where you can, serve on the PTA, or you can do a lot with school teams, you can really just start with making a relationship with your teacher. If your child's in middle school or high school, emailing even a group message with all of your teachers 
that your kid works with and just keep it in touch with them and just seeing how is your kid doing and letting them know that you're there to support them. So again, we want to make sure that we get your voice. If any of this resonates with you, um, we hope that you feel validated and connected. But if we are not sharing your experience, we want you to share your experience with us. So now we switch to um, My name a is school Jim. voice and we switch to kind of what our schools are thinking, right? So we know that in order for us to have a partnership, we have to be in relationship with the schools. So we wanted to highlight some of the thoughts and the goals of our schools who are working to support family engagement. So I'm gonna turn it over to Ms. Amy McDonald um, at Kenwood Elementary. Kenwood Elementary, home of the Cubs. So we are a little gym located in the South End of Louisville, JCPS, yes. Um, I am actually, my title now is Family Ambassador. It used to be Parent Liaison, but I felt like that was limited considering uh, the diversity that we have in JCPS. Uh, we also have uh, the highest number of uh, elementary ESL students. So uh, we changed it to Family Ambassador too because that was a term that they were uh, more familiar with. And uh, usually when I talk about my job, it's, I have a lot of facets, but one thing that is kind of the broad work is I try to bridge the gap between school to home and vice versa. I think every teacher's hopes and dreams for their students are the same as they are for their own children. And I think that's one thing that makes Kenwood amazing. Uh, I really do want the same thing that I want for my children. I want them to have the best education possible without limitations. And I want them the best, I want them to have access to um, anything they're interested in beyond Kenwood. So, you know, some of the things that we put in place is not just educating the whole child while they're at Kenwood, but looking for, are they prepared for middle school? Do they have the opportunities to compete with other kids from other elementary schools, whether they're a magnet school or not? So, I want them to have the same, I have the same hopes and dreams for all of our cubs that I do for my own children. One thing that we realized at Kenwood is that if you want to build a relationship, you really have to get some boots on the ground because uh, just part of, you know, JCPS history and the history of our city, not every uh, family is comfortable coming to school. And so if you can build that relationship by doing a home visit and kind of going from there, like, and during COVID, of course, porch visits. But I think where most of my success and relationship building was actually through the pandemic. Like people talk about what we, what we lost during the pandemic, but what we gained was an opportunity to help our families in a time where they were struggling most and that opportunity to meet them uh, where they live and kind of see more about their family by doing home visits. But you really can't do anything until you've built trust. So uh, like we were talking about earlier, uh, we have two to one Chromebooks. So our families have access to us. I think that's done um, a lot to build trust because they can contact us through a virtual meeting or they also just know, hey, Kenwood trusts us enough to have a Chromebook in our home. So I think building that trust is uh, step one. Yeah, you've got to have that trust or you really can't go far. Well, I will say for um, for last year, our big push, and I'm as proud of this as any of our other awards. You know, we had an attendance award for Title I. To me, that's the that's where the uh, that's where the money is, as you would say. Like, if we get our kids to school, then they will see the magic. But if you're not here to witness it then, or if you're not here to learn the lessons, to see all the amazing things that our teachers are doing, then it's all for naught. So it's the, the big part of family engagement that's really helped is just having our kids be here and having our families want their kids to be here. Because once we get uh, our kids in the building and they see how engaging and how amazing Kenwood is, then they keep coming back. Well, I would say if, and this is kind of a tip both ways, but if your school hasn't already done a family survey, I think that's crucial. So we do a family survey that's based in the funds of knowledge. Uh, most people are familiar with that work, but if they're not, it's really the funds of knowledge is tapping into 
what is uh, important to your family? What learning experiences does your family bring to the table? It's really hard for uh, a teacher and for a family to build trust and have communication if we don't uh, know certain practices or cultural information about your family. So maybe doing a family survey, and if your teacher hasn't done a family survey with you, maybe letting your teacher know um, specific things about your family, like um, even your religion or what holidays you uh, you practice or things about your kid that maybe you wouldn't know just by first, first glance or first meet. So really just advocating for your child and letting your teacher know the small things that sometimes aren't so small. Events are great and we love to have a good party, but um, systems and structures are more important than parties. So if you haven't laid the groundwork and kind of built the frame for, let's say, a movie night, my principal likes to say pop-up events. We want things to be sustainable. So let's say um, in a couple of years, we don't have the same staff. We don't have the same students. We want to build a routine. So that's most important. And then just to do a shout out to the zoo. Hey, Louisville Zoo. We're excited about our upcoming project with them because all of our students and their siblings and their parents are getting free memberships to the Louisville Zoo. So that's just going to be a time for us to um, outside of Kenwood for our families to get together. We love to highlight the different, different cultures that we have in our building, but we also want those different cultures to have an opportunity to meet other families, to build those networks, because I am one family ambassador, but it's amazing when you get parents on board and they become ambassadors too. So we, um, we have BAIs that would run uh, family nights and really they, they organize a lot of it themselves. And so we've had uh, a Somali-speaking family night. We've had Spanish-speaking uh, family night. We've had um, Albanian-speaking family night. And of course, we have um, an ESL night for all languages. And we have a Kenwood family night as well. But it's just an opportunity for them to network. Uh, and then when things started, uh, I don't want to say shutting down, when things started opening it up, up virtually, I guess that's a good positive spin on it, when things started opening up virtually. Um, probably one of our most successful events was we did a virtual culture fair and it's where the students and the parents, um, they had an opportunity to submit pictures and information about themselves and their background. But the crazy thing that ended up being so informative was we put it all on a Google map. So you could actually click where they were from and like see their city and their surroundings. And I learned, you know, I think I know everybody's business, but I learned so many things from that virtual culture fair. And I think our students and our parents did as well. But that was a great opportunity for them to um, really be woven together during the pandemic when they may not have been able to otherwise. All right, so shout out to Kenwood Elementary and the amazing words of Amy McDonald. And if you're wondering, like, you know, many of us know that obviously kids do better when families are engaged, but not only do kids do better, schools do better. And I want to shout out Kenwood Elementary because they are the very first uh, JCPS school in the history of JCPS schools to receive uh, the Title I School of Distinction Award. I think I'm wording it right, but they have re recently been um, awarded this honor um, and they are the first school in JCPS to receive that honor. There's only been a couple of schools in Kentucky that have received that honor and um, it's a national rec it's national recognition. So again, fam engaging families is not something that's, you know, just cute or having these pop-up events like, oh, they're great. But like Amy said, you have to have a system and a routine for it because Amy obviously is amazing and very passionate about engaging families. And so am I, but regardless of the person that's in a role, we should always be about the business of engaging families if we're about the business of educating kids. So I think it's, I love that they've set up systems at their school. They do family surveys to make sure that they're always responsive. And if you are at a school and no one's ever asked you, uh, what are your hopes and dreams or what are some things that you wanna do? Let us know. 
um, because we want to work with schools to make sure that schools are reaching out to family leaders uh, to figure out how they can be more responsive to you. So those are some of the highlights and the voices that we uh, wanted to share today. And again, if we did not share your voice or we did not share a story that resonated with you, or if any of these stories got you thinking about some things that you want to do in your school, please, um, you know, connect with us on social. Feel free to reach out and share some of those things on social. Um, in addition, we also have some upcoming meetings. And so please put these on your calendar as some meetings that we have coming up. So we have um, our next one is going to be on December 17th at 10 o'clock. And we're going to be sharing some information about um, some of our departments and JCPS that work to help families. And so in addition to that, if you uh, want to send us some stories or if you have any questions, you will be able to find some of our contact information on this page. So you'll find my information. You'll find Andrea Brown's information. She is with NCFL and helps us. So please keep in contact with us. We want to wish you happy family engagement week, and we just want to let you know that we cannot do this without you, and we absolutely appreciate all that you do. So we are signing off. Um, again, stay in touch with us. We'll see you next time on December 17th, or if you're watching this, the recorded version, thanks for tuning in and uh, keep in touch with us and send us your stories. Thank you.